Hey, thanks for hanging out. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make this sawhorse or sawbuck to make it easier and safer when using a chainsaw to cut firewood. Let's get after it. These are the boards I'm going to use to be able to make uh, the section of the, the uh, sawhorse where I'm gonna put the timber so that I can rest my foot on there nice and comfortably and it's not gonna move around and it can't roll around. These are just some scrap pieces of floorboard that I had left over from another job. They're solid, uh, solid oak, so they're nice and tough. They'll, they'll last well out in the weather well enough for what my needs are. So I'm just gonna take the, uh, the tongue off of one side and the groove off the other side for the two pieces that I'm gonna use for the sawhorse itself. Then this second board I'm going to rip down into uh, two inch widths, 50 millimeter widths to be able to use for some bracing so that the sawhorse doesn't move around too much. So let's, um, let's get the saw fired up and let's do that. These pieces that I'm gonna cut for the stays for the sawhorse are some reclaimed Jarra floor joists that have come out of a demolished building. So I'm just going to cut those. Obviously, need to be wary of the nails. I'm not too worried about denailing it before I actually start cutting it, unless there's a nail that is going to be uh, on a cut. I'm going to cut these to um, around about 800 meter, millimeters long, 30, 32 inches, and then put those together in a cross brace with a little bit of a pocket cut just to be able to help stop it from moving around too much. So what I'm going to try, I don't know whether this will work yet or not, but this is a what's called a trenching tool. So it's got a nice wide blade on it. It's used for scalloping out timber such as this. This is very, very hard timber though. So I don't know how it's going to go. I might need to go back to just a circular saw and then just chisel out the, the pocket that I'm going to make. But I'm going to give this a try first. Well, that was probably too hard to control. So I'm gonna go back to uh, the circular saw and, uh, and trench it out with that. All right, so what I've done is I've set the depth stop on my crosscut saw to be able to, miter saw to be able to just uh, cut down around about 10 millimeters or around about 3 eighths of an inch. Then what I'll do is I'll just clean out the center area with a chisel and hammer and then um, just work to can get the two pieces to fit together uh, hopefully with a fairly snug fit but not too tight that it um, uh, that I can't get it together at all so I'll just massage that as we go This is really hard old timber, so I'm not too keen to use one of my good chisels on here. So I've got this uh, really rough old one. Um, it's got an edge on it. It'll be enough to knock this out. Uh, let's see how we go.
Well, that is going to be very, very close. I think I can just uh, man massage that to be able to get those two fit together nicely. There it is. Just going to uh, drill two holes and then bolt this together. I have marked the holes on there again, like everything with this project, it doesn't have to be too exact, but I do want it to look reasonable. Um, 10 millimeter holes or three eighths holes, and I'll use some three eighths cup head bolts just so that they sink into the timber nicely. So these are the boat bolts that I'm going to use. They're galvanized so they'll last nicely outside. They've got this little square head just underneath the actual cup head of the bolt itself which pulls into the timber which means that you don't need to be able to hold a, a wrench on this end to be able to tighten it up and they, they can um, pull up nice and tight on there which will be fantastic so I'll give those a, a tap with a hammer and tighten them up There it is. One half done, we'll do the other half and then we'll start putting it together. While I've got the miter saw out, I'm just uh, the um, uh, drop saw out, I'm just going to cut the 45s on here to save me having to do it with the, uh, the saws all later. This is extremely hard timber to drill into and, and all those, although these are a self-drilling needle point screw, I am going to drill a pilot hole just to be able to just save the, the stress on the drill and hopefully make this go a little bit smoother. Beautiful. All right, so I'm going to screw the two pieces on that are going to be able to make the um, the, the rest for where I'm going to put my uh, my timber in. Um, so I'm just going to uh, just going to set this and then just measure it off so that um, so that it's nice and square and uh, and hopefully that'll just help help it sit a little bit better on the ground. So. What I need to do is, I haven't done anything fancy with beveling the bottom of these so they sit together nicely. So all I'm going to do, so I'm just going to set this board in here to give me a, uh, a gap. And I just want to square this up, trying not to get too concerned about it. That's pretty good there. I'm happy with that. And I am going to use some countersink screws just so that when you're sliding a piece of timber across, it's not gonna get hung up on anything. There we go, one side done. This is really solid already without bracing, but I'm going to, going to go ahead and get the bracing on uh, just to make sure that, um, that it doesn't, doesn't fall over while I've got a chainsaw in my hand. Okay, I'm going to start to add the diagonal braces to this, and, and again, I'm not getting too fussy about it, but I do want it to be reasonably square and, and nice. So uh, I'm going to screw one end in first. I'm going to take a couple of diagonal measurements, and then I'm uh, just going to see where, uh, where we're at with it. So there it is, 
nice comfortable height to be able to get your foot up on there so that you can just hold the piece of timber that you're sawing. It's nice and solid. That's a, uh, a great little project. All right, let's, uh, let's see how it works. Super strong, sturdy. Uh, you saw me jumping on it before. I'm about 245 pounds or about 110 kilos, so it uh, can take that weight easily. Uh, it's very, very sturdy. The bracings work really well. The way that I did the join for the legs, I probably could have got away without doing a, a spreader brace at the bottom, but I added that for extra rigidity as well. The um, pocket worked really well for the bracing on the for the cross brace on the legs. It allowed me to get a bit of rigidity in there, plus the, the bolts that I had lying around that I used as spares meant that I didn't have to, to do any, any recessing or anything like that to be able to make those work. So that worked out really, really great. Uh, works well, very happy with it. Great little project, just out of some scraps and some wood that would have been cut up or burnt or thrown away in any case. So uh, very happy and it makes life a lot easier.